specifically, it's going to be the ones that um, the first one, well, no, actually both of them, both examples I'm going to do are going to have those extra steps in there where we have to go from exponential form, you know, logarithmic form to exponential form, where we've got to do the let k equal e to the c. We've got to throw some extra values in, okay? Now, you've already encountered this on your homework, all right? However, I want to do, a, again, just so that we kind of touch base on it, what if we had like a 1 plus an x squared, then we had a y prime, Okay, minus a two x y equals zero. Okay, now across the board, some of you, like when you did do the homework and some of you saw that, some of you came up and asked and was like, oh, hey, this has got a y prime in it, what the heck? Okay, so um, at any point in time, you can change that y prime if you like the form of the dy over dx. All right, that's usually what it has in it. If you like that form better, okay, we'll just replace y prime with dy over dx. All right, that maybe will let you see, oh, hey, one, it's a differential equation. Two, I got to separate those variables out. Okay, so you can do it immediately. You can do it later in the problem. It really wouldn't matter when you did it. All right, so um, well, I'm going to rewrite it with the dy over dx. So one plus x squared. All right, dy over dx minus 2xy. Okay, so I don't know. Let's see. We need to add this both sides. So let's do that first. All right, so 1 plus x squared dy over dx. We'll put that on the other side, 2xy. All right, then maybe from there, uh, this has got an x in it, and I want to get rid of that. So let's divide both sides by the 1 plus x squared. Okay, so 1 plus x squared, 1 plus x squared, so that crosses out on that side. Okay, so then I'll be down to a dy over a dx is equal to a 2xy all over a 1 plus x squared. Okay, um, moving the dx is going to be kind of easy, so I can multiply both sides by dx. I also need to get rid of this y because I can't have that y over there. So in the same step, can I divide by y? Okay, probably, yes. So let's do it in two different colors. So let's multiply by dx here. So it crosses out over there, it puts my dx over here. Okay, let's also divide both sides of the equation by y. So if I divide this side by y, the y's go away. There's an imaginary one sitting there, right? So divide it by y. Okay, so here now I have the one over the y dy is equal to the 2x and then over the 1 plus x squared dx. Okay, so I've got the variables separated at this point. Okay, now the step that we're missing a lot, that I'm missing every time that we've done a quiz, all right, in the last couple ones that we have done, all right, what I'm not seeing is I see you do this but then I don't see you clearly indicate that, oh, hey, at this point, now I'm gonna use a really bright color again. I don't see you say, okay, now I need to integrate both sides. Okay, so I cannot emphasize enough of that because you get points for separating, okay? But then you also definitely on the AP test get points for clearly indicating after they've been separated, clearly indicating you've got that integral there. So I, we're just kind of missing that, okay? Um, now, on this left-hand side, this is going to be kind of straightforward, right? Natural log of absolute value of y. So this integrates easy on this side. So let's come up here. Probably need to go to a whole new piece of paper. Natural log, absolute value of y. Okay, now for this right here, okay, we need to do what? And, and this is another thing that I'm, I'm missing out with you guys. You're like, I've been throwing some just random integral problems on some of our quizzes. And all of a sudden, you guys are just kind of like, like totally losing it. Like we've, I don't know, you've forgotten that, oh, there's this thing called U substitution. I don't know. All right. So this, all right, has to be a U substitution. All right. You got, so if you need to come and do over here somewhere, like margin your paper, 2x over a 1 plus x squared dx. Okay, so I need to do a u substitution. So what do I do? I let the bottom be u. All right, so I'm going to let my u be that 1 plus x squared. 
All right, derivative of both sides, du equals 2x dx. All right, and then divide both sides by 2x. So du over 2x equals dx. All right, so like don't hesitate to come over to the margin of your paper, do this sort of thing. Okay, let's go, we'd have the integral here. 2x is gonna stay on the top. This one plus x squared becomes a u. I replace dx with the du over the 2x. All right, that lets, um, you guys can see that at home because I can't see it on my screen. 2x crosses out, all right, which gets me down to the integral of one over u du. All right, when I get to one over u du, that's our natural log, absolute value of u plus c, replace u with what it equals. So natural log, absolute value of one plus x squared plus c. Okay, so that right there is integrating this side. And so if you have to use the margin of your paper to do that, that's okay. All right, somewhere else. So I'm gonna put that now up here. So then I've got natural log, all right, absolute value one plus x squared, absolute value there plus c. Can okay. we do that in line with like, not go to the side of our paper? Or because we took the integral of the y side, we have to have. Right, yes. You, If you're gonna integrate, let's go back to here. All right, I, I don't, you should not integrate this and leave this as an integral really. All right, like, so I need to integrate this and this almost simultaneously, almost. I mean, sometimes in the earlier work, we kind of like did it the other way, but because this involves that U substitution, I would probably do it, integrate it over to the side and then put this. So then this clearly is this whole entire thing's been integrated everywhere here and here. Does that make sense? I think it's gonna make it a little bit more cleaner, okay? Now, when I get to this step right here, okay, what do I need to do? I'm in, you got to kind of look at this, I'm in logarithmic form, right? I'm in logarithmic form. So if I'm in logarithmic form, I need to go to exponential form. And that, we're, we're missing that one. So exponential form. So I need to rewrite my lights went out in the room because no one's in the room with me. Okay, so we need to go to exponential form. Okay, so um, base of E right here, right? So E raised to this entire thing equals the absolute value of Y. E raised to this entire thing equals the absolute value of Y. And I generally write it that way initially, especially when I'm trying to go to exponential form. So e raised to the natural log absolute value one plus x squared plus c is equal to absolute value of y. All right, now ultimately what we want y on the left hand side. So, but if you need to write it like this first so that you're thinking exponential form, the base raised to this equal to this, that's fine. All right, I would then probably rewrite and put absolute value of y is equal to e raised to natural log absolute value one plus x squared and then plus c. All right, now this is your second one. I'm gonna do this in a different color, okay? Right here on this side is where we undo our laws of exponents. We have a base with two things being added. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna write laws of exponents, all right? But this is where we separate those. When I multiply like bases, I add the exponents. These are being added in the exponent, which meant I can break that up into two bases that are being multiplied. Okay, so absolute value of y is equal to an e raised to the natural log, absolute value one plus x squared, all right, times an e to the c, all right? So from here to here, all I'm doing is undoing my laws of exponents, okay? And then we've talked about this in the past, all right? What is E raised to a constant? Well, E is a constant and C is already a constant that I threw in when I integrated. So basically this is another constant, which is different than this C right here. So then that's why at some point in place here, you've got to tell everyone you're gonna switch it over. You're gonna let um, K 
equal e to the c. Okay, just so it's a different constant. All right, kind of cleans it up a little bit. All right, so then I'm going to put the k in for that. So absolute value of y equals, and I'm going to go ahead and put it in front because it's constant, it's a number. Okay, so k e raised to the natural log absolute value one plus x squared. All right, and then we get rid of the absolute value bars. So when we do that, we can just throw in that little plus or minus in front. Okay, so let's see what order I want to do that. I'm just going to go y equals plus or minus k e raised to the natural log absolute value one plus x squared. And then um, now, technically, I'll take that. We had something like this um, on our last test or quiz, which we haven't been able to go over because we not everybody's taken all of our tests yet. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that answer. That's a fine answer. Okay, but can anybody look at that and think of some way to change it? Can anybody look at this and think of some way to change it? based on our laws of like our e to the x, our natural logs rules, our e rules, our can you think of anything? Because I don't think anybody got it on the last quiz that I put on there. All right, a long time ago, all right, this is an e raised to the natural log absolute value one plus x squared. All right, and we did do this through the pandemic last, last spring, so you might not have caught it. This is a base of E raised to an exponent. This exponent part right here has a matching base of E. So the base on the log of this exponent and the base of this entire expression, base raised to an exponent, those bases matches, match. All right, so basically those two things cross out. This is equivalent to the absolute value of one plus x squared. Okay, and that we, it was a formula. We memorized that. Okay. Um, now, take a look at this expression. Okay. Well, if I have some value for x and I square it, it's always going to be positive, right? And then if I add one more, it's always going to be positive. So then technically, do I really need the absolute value bars anymore? Not really, right? So really, I can just write this as one plus x squared. All right, so what that does is it says I can take this portion and rewrite that to just a one plus x squared. So really y equals plus or minus k times a one plus x squared, okay, as a general solution. All right, now, does this general solution work as an answer? Yes, it does. All right, does this general solution work as an answer? Yes, it does. This one's just simplified a little bit more, okay? And this literally was on the last quiz test we took. I don't remember what it was, all right? And most of you left it in this form and that was perfectly fine, I counted it right, okay? However, if you can see it, if you can see it in the future, because what, let's say, I don't know, what if this was a multiple choice question on the AP test? and you had to come up with a general solution and they didn't give you this, they only gave you this as one of the choices. So you, so you do have to, in case it would be a multiple choice question, you do have to be able to see how your answer could maybe be simplified further. Okay, all right, so that was quite a lot. That was kind of intense. Are we good? Like you're awful quiet. When we do these Zoom meetings, you're awful quiet, so I really don't know. All right. 